paddles tonight, it's probably not happening in the next 50 minutes. I love you guys. I love battling against everybody. I wish I could stay up that late, but... <sighs> my best friend is in town, and I guess we got to figure out what we're bringing out first. So we'll talk about my best friend real quick. My best friend is in town. He's, part of the, he's in the Marine Corps, so he gets up really early, and he's dragging me out to the gym basically every day of the week this week. So I'm super excited about that because I'm a nerd and I love working out, right? Mmm. Love, love being a nerd. Because nerds work out all the time. That's how I got these huge biceps, right? Mmm. By working out all the time. Mmm. Anyway, with that being said, he's going to be dragging me out every morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's still dark at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I don't want to be awake. So I'm probably going to want to sleep at some point tonight, so 10 p.m. it is, and I'm going to have to stick to it tonight. So, hello everybody, this is DKG's Avos. Smeargle is out first, and you have absolutely no idea what to expect out of Smeargle. He's usually a really good suicide leadout, but we'll see how it goes. It looks like he's going for Spore. So, since we're playing by Smogan rules, that means that there's a sleep clause, which means he can only put one of my Pokemon to sleep at a time. Now, being as that's Nidoking, that sucks a lot. But it does mean that we can switch something else in and not have to worry about being put to sleep because he's already asleep. That's pretty general all-around Pokemon rules, so we don't worry about it too much. But we do expect that this is going to be some sort of crazy lead-out kind of thing. It's not as much of a suicide lead-out, but sticky web spikes... Stealth Rocks, that kind of thing, not unusual with a Spore lead-out Smeargle. Alright, so now at this point, we're going to go for Brick Break, try and deal with this thing as much as possible. I have a feeling that he's probably going to Focus Sash on there, because Smeargle, although he can be fairly quick, and pretty good at dealing with, uh, well, putting up a lot of hazards, usually not that strong, so we shouldn't have to deal with it too much. There we go, Focus Sash right there. Nobody wants their lead out killed in one shot. You want to be able to set up a couple of hazards. So I'm going to go for the Aqua Jet and deal with it. We've already got the rocks up, which means that, well, Walren deals with rocks very poorly. He's about the only one on the team that deals with them poorly. I don't want to have it. So for normal Pokemon, it's about an eighth of your HP with Stealth Rocks. With Pokemon that are weak to it by two times, that's going to be a quarter of their HP. And then four times weak, it's half. If you resist it by any means, then it's a 16th to a 32nd, if I've got those all straight. So, at this point, we've got Jolteon out. Jolteon, it used to be that you had to worry about Hidden Power Ice back in the Pokesaving days. So, there were Pokegen and Pokesav, and there were a lot of people that were, like, hacking Pokemon to make sure that they were exactly perfect. People were making sure that they had Ice Hidden Power on Jolteon. In the modern era of Pokemon outside of, like, Diamond and Pearl, you don't necessarily have to worry about that so much, just because it's a lot more of a random chance kind of IVs on your off IV. So right now, we're going for Earth Power. We get the Wake Up! Nice! That's some good luck. Now, the nice thing about Gen 6 that I love about Gen 6 is that your sleep timer doesn't reset when you switch out anymore. Happened in Gen 5, it happened in Gen 4, 3, 2, and 1. Every time you switched out, it reset to a, well, a chance, and after five turns, you woke up, guaranteed. All right, now with Kovacrygus, Kovacrygus is really, well, bulky, to say the least. But he should have access to Psychic, which means that Nidoking's a little bit threatened. With Sticky Web, we don't want to keep him in. So with Psychic coming out and about, uh, the other thing we have to worry about is that Mummy ability. We really don't want to deal with that too much. So, I don't know. I don't really know where I want to go here. But with King being weak to Psychic, which I'm pretty sure Kofagrigus should have some sort of Psychic attack, Meowstick is going to have troubles with his Stab move, which would be any Ghost move ever. Walrin should be able to deal with it pretty well, so I feel like that's probably our best move. But we also do have the Assault Vest on Azumarill, so he should be able to deal with Kofagrigus pretty well. But the problem is that Azumarill deals, like, physical direct damage, so huge power would be gone. And I don't want to have huge power gone. That's as bad as being burned. So, it looks like we're going to be Will-O-Wisp 
So, not too bad here. You can see that a quarter of the HP there with Walren gone immediately. Burn damage on Walren, not a huge deal, but it still can be a problem. So we can go for the Protect, try and stall it out, but it's really not going to last that long. So we might as well just take the burn, throw up some hail, just bleh, hail, bleh, blah, blah, right there the hail. Throw in hail everywhere. No, I don't know if Kovagrius really wants to deal with this, but... Hail's not a huge deal, it's like a 16th year HP, so you'd have to have a lot of hail going on to really deal with it. Will-O-Wisp is going to eliminate some of my ability to stall and wall out with this Walrin, but because of Ice Body, because of Leftovers, I'm not taking any damage from the burn, and because he's a special attacker, I'm not losing any of my attack stat because of the burn. So as long as I've got hail up, we're going to be fine. And because I know that he's a special defensive, really bulky Pokemon, we should be good. Things to keep in mind that sand damage and hail damage do the same amount as leftovers recovers, so keep that in the back of your mind. We're going to go ahead and go straight into Frost Breath. We're not going to worry about the Protect at this point, trying to scout out what Kofagrigus is going to go for, because it really doesn't matter at this point. We just want to hit him. We've got a special defensive Pokemon. It looks like Walren still outspeeds Kofagrigus, which, odd. So maybe he's going for some sort of hit second move, but Hex is going to come out. Stab move, not super effective. Doesn't really have a whole lot of, of damage. Like, base power on that is like 60. So even with same type ta attack bonus, it'd be like a, a neutral 90, effectively. Not going to be crazy effective against Walren. Since we've seen him take super effective damage and still survive it, we're pretty happy with Walren sticking around. We're going to be okay with that. Now, really, um, having Frost Breath... It's not doing that much. And again, the burn's not going to be stalled out. The biggest thing that Kofagrigus is trying to do with that Protect is stall out the Hail. And so he's regenerating the same amount that Hail's doing with his leftovers, so he's not worried about that. I'm regenerating the same amount that Burn's doing with my leftovers and my Hail, so I'm not too worried about that. But eventually Hail's going to wear off, and I'm going to be losing HP every turn. Hmm. Right there, I lost one HP. One. Single HP. So at that point, really, maybe we should get rid of our Walren at this point. I think Kofagrigus should be more defensive bulky than special defensive bulky, if I remember correctly, but is what it is. My memory's sometimes a little bit shady. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Scissor. I've got the Thief available. I may not be faster than Kofagrigus, but he's not going to take that much from Rocks, and he's not going to take that much from Hex either. So we should be good with that, and Thief should be super effective. We're going to go for the Mega Scissor, just to deal with it. Yes, we're taking Hail damage, because, well, we're noobs and we like Hail. But it is what it is. Oh, yes, water. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and go for that Mega. Go for Thief, because it is super effective against Kofagrigus. Kofagrigus does have to worry a little bit, because there are people that are running um, Pursuit on Scissor. So sometimes staying in against Scissor is actually the best move, but you have to be able to predict the fact that there's Pursuit. <coughs> and Protect is often the best way to scout that kind of thing. So at this point, we should be on our last turn of Hail. There it is. Hail did stop. I really didn't want to deal with too much on Walren, so I did switch out a little bit earlier. But it is what it is. We've got Scissor out now. That's the biggest thing that we need to worry about. Thief is going to do super effective. He gained a little bit of HP back from that leftovers. But, you know what? Thief's super effective. It's going to scare him out. We're going to be okay with that. Now, again, I really don't want to predict the fact that he's going to be scared out. Because at this point, I feel like I'm on the back foot. Jolty on a really rough switch. I guess I'm not as back foot as I think I am. Looking at that, it's uh, currently 4-6. So I'm not as bad off as I thought I was, but Jolteon, um, not, it's usually really fast, but I feel like this Jolteon's a little bit of death fodder here. Better to lose Jolteon than a lot of other things, but still sucks losing Jolteon. He's a really good special attacker, he's really fast, I mean, right up there with, like, Electrode fast. I mean, that's how I always put Jolteon in my head. Alright, so now we've got Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl against Scissor, we've got our stab steel move, so we should be okay there, but 
I mean, we're probably going to lose Scissor to Aerodactyl at some point. Neutral damage from any sort of flying move. The fact that he's going Mega means that he's going to hit us even harder. And a little bit faster, probably. Most of these Megas are just all around bulkier and a little bit faster, with the exception of Garchomp. Garchomp did actually lose 10 speed there. I was not expecting a one-hit KO, but I'll take it. I will take it all day. Because Aerodactyl is a rock-type Pokemon, steel moves are super effective, so I wasn't expecting that Aerodactyl was going to be able to stay in too long against Bullet Punch. Bullet Punch was our best option. So, Kovagragus, again, going to go for this Protect. Really, Will-O-Wisp would probably be best, because Scissor, with that Will-O-Wisp, it reduces my attack stat down to half, and I think Mega Scissor would then be down to, like, a base attack of, what, 70? 65, maybe? So we're going to go for the Thief, and again, this is a max max attack, max speed scissor. So he's not the bulkiest scissor around, lacks a little bit on the special defensive side, but you can see, hey, look at that, not bad. Not bad against Kofagragas. There's the Will-O-Wisp coming out here. Now we're going to take burn damage every turn. He might go for the Protect, try and get a little bit more Leftovers damage in here, or Leftovers health back, but... Really, uh, based on the fact that we outspeed him, we can go for Thief and deal with this Kofagragas. But we're going to go for the Bullet Punch because I feel like it should deal with it. If he goes for Protect, then we're go we'll go for the Thief the next turn because he's trying to stall it out, try and get that burn damage in. We've already seen that we outspeed the Kofagragas, so we're not too worried about that. And Thief should clear out that Kofagragas, even though we've reduced our attack stat by half and lost Technician. Almost every move that we've got here, actually, basically every move that we've got here, takes advantage of Technician. So looking through it, um, even U-Turn, well, no U-Turn's the only one. So we've got Bullet Punch, which does 40 base, and then we've got Thief, which does 60 base, so 90 and 60, respectively, at the end of it all. So having a priority move that does 60 base damage before Stab, pretty good. Looks like Kofagragas gets some nice luck in there, gets that second Protect off. But we're going to go for Thief, clear out Kofagragas. Yeah, Kofagragas is going to have more HP that we have to worry about, but that just means that we're not going to go for the Bullet Punch. The chances of going, of getting that second Protect is actually, like, what is it, half? And then it just reduces by half every time. I think it's half, it might be a quarter. It looks like Kofagragas does have quite an, just enough HP there. Thief not quite getting in there. Wanted it, but the burn and lack of technician, just too much to handle. 60 base damage with mummy. Eh, not so much. Basically a 30 base damage move going in there. It was similar to going for bullet punch and not being able to deal with Kofagragas. Not too bad, though. Not too offended. Alright, so now knowing that he's down to Kofagragas and basically one other Pokemon, we can go ahead and go for a Zoomeril here. He's going to go for the Protect one more time, I imagine, just because why not. So I'm going to go for the Aqua Jet, trying to get that Kofagragas out on anything other than Protect. Deal with it. Azumarill is stupid slow, and I mean stupidly slow. So I really expect Kofagragas to be able to outspeed us. I don't expect that Hex is going to be able to deal a one-hit KO to Azumarill from this kind of health. But, you know what, why not? We're going to go for Play Rough, though. Unfortunately, we're going to lose our huge power, basically, by getting burned. And then once we go for the... Once we make contact with him, we're going to lose it for sure. And now we're down to a quarter of the attack stat that we had before. Lost huge power, so we lost half of our attack stat there. And then we're burned, so that's another half, so now we're down to a quarter. Half times a half, math, math, math. Yeah. Grrr. Alright, so we got Greninja coming in here. I'm just going to go for the Aqua Jet. Might as well. We're not going to outspeed it, so we're not going to be able to deal with it that way. It's Greninja. It's his last Pokemon. We should be able to deal with this with our Meowstic. Just coming in here, going for the T-Wave, and whatever. Ugh. Kofagragas absolutely trying to stall everything out. And doing a pretty good job at it. Every time you've got a Pokemon with leftovers, having Protect is pretty helpful. Now, it looks like Play Rough might actually help out at that point, but oh well. Azumarill with the 
<laughs> well, he's got a salt vest on. She. So, play rough. We could have gotten two play roughs off, and then Greninja wouldn't have been dealt with because it's a quarter of the HP, right? So, it doesn't really matter. Absolutely did not matter. We've got a quarter of our attack stat in here because we're burned and mummied. So, we got nothing. We're just going to deal damage to deal damage, just in case he's got a focus sash because we haven't seen the life orb in there. So, whatever it is, is what it is. So now at this point, we've got a mixed attacker, Greninja, coming in. And I say mixed attacker. Oh, we got Mummy on it. Yes. So now he's a bug type. Guaranteed bug type. Oh, yeah, son. What? Mummy on your mummy. Yeah. Yeah, we're slowed down by the sticky web. But even with our speed falling with a Greninja that's uh, going to be paralyzed here in a second... And then we'll throw out a light screen, and then we'll just deal with Greninja. Aww, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I really love Greninja, but I love the physical sets on Greninja. And I'm going to beat this horse to death. I think that Greninja, as a physical Pokemon, is just as viable as a special attacking Greninja. You get Water Shuriken from Greninja, which is possibly one of the best priority moves in the game, because minimum damage it's going to do 30. Maximum damage is, what, 75? 75 base damage on... It's stupid amounts of damage. 75 base damage on a priority move. Awesome. Alright, so Greninja should be able to clear out Meowstic um, just with, like, U-turn. And all I've got is Dark Pulse, so I'm not going to be able to do that much. There we go. Meowstic's out of here. It deals with a decent amount. You can see three hits there from Greninja. Not bad. But it does look like we're going to be able to bring out Nidoking. It is locked into the bug type because it lost Protean by making physical contact with our Azumarill. That was a little bit of a misstep there. Would have had a better shot at doing more damage with Greninja. But we're alright with it. So at this point, I'm going to go for Fire Blast. Again, we've got three Pokemon left. We're going to be able to deal with this Greninja. You can play a little bit risky at this point. Not bad. There it is. GG.